Uh, hello, so welcome to another tutorial of color correcting with Magic Bullet Suite 12. Uh, this is a set of plugins for Adobe Premiere, After Effects, or Final Cut that really can transfer the, the transform the, the look of your your shots. And, and it's a whole suite uh, of these different plugins that you know if you buy them together, you save yourself around three hundred dollars. So uh, I would really advise if you guys are gonna get it, get get the whole suite. Uh, but you can also, if you want to, you can buy them separately. So in part one, I already gonna showed you guys how, to, how I use Magic Bullet Colorista for my color grading. And in part two, I showed you guys how I use Magic Bullet Looks uh, to, to change the, the look of my shot. Now I'm going to show you how, uh, what basically what Magic Bullet Film and Magic Bullet Mojo does. Uh, and, and also what, you know, kind of quickly touch on Co Cosmo. Uh, anyway, so let's go back to Premiere. Uh, so this is the shot that I was working on in, in the other tutorials. Uh, this is the, the look that I got with the Magic Bullet Looks. This is with the Colorista. Uh, and now I'm going to show you guys, like I said, uh, first one will be the Magic Bullet Film. I'm just going to drag and drop it here um, and ma what basically what Magic Bullet Film does is it applies a sort of a film analog film look so this is as if you were uh, you know if you, you were shooting not on a digital camera but on, on a you know on a film camera and um, what's cool about it is that it really kind of uh, treats the footage in a very organic way uh, both uh, in terms of like basically looks at what kind of let's say stock you would using it as, as your negative stock and then a print stock so the first thing you want to do is you kind of choose your footage and sort of tell tell the plugin how your footage was shot. So if you're shooting, for example, log, like let's say with the Sony A7S or A7 you know, R2, which shoots an S-log, then you would put log. Uh, if you're shooting with, let's say, like a flat look video, like like I'm shooting here on the GH4 with the, the Cine D, um, then you would choose flat. And then if you're shooting more kind of standard video, like with any, let's say, Canon DSLRs, like 5D, or Canon 70, then you would choose video. So for this one, I'll just choose flat. Um, then the next thing you do is you, you cho choose your film stack. So there's lots of different film stacks. These are actual film stacks that, that are, well, used to exist. Some of them are still, I think, being made. Uh, and then there's some imaginary ones that are kind of have different cool looks. So it, it's pretty simple because, like I said, all you're doing is just kind of pick and choosing which kind of look that you want. So this is here the negative stack that you'll be choosing. And then here you can choose the print stock. So again, obviously the, the film stock that you end up printing your final shot on will, will change the look of your shot. So as you can see, you're choosing from Fujifilm and there's a few different sort of these most more popular film stocks. So let's say I'll just stick to Kodak. So Kodak 5218 Vision 2 uh, and then for print stock, the Kodak 2383. And then that's kind of the kind of the look that it gives me. And as you can see, w this is without it, the original shot, and this is with it. It definitely makes it look a lot more filmic, or you know, gives you that film look, without really any work on my part. Uh, like I said, all you do is just you know pick w the whatever option that you want. Now you do have other things up here that if you want to sort of further go in and tweak the shot, so uh, you can change, for example, the, the the temperature of your shot. So you can pull it, make it warmer, kind of cooler. So let's say this is a desert shot, so I want to make it a little bit warmer, so add a little bit, not too much, but somewhere there. I can change the tint, uh, which is something I'm not going to do in this shot. I think the tint is all right. Um, uh, you can also change the exposure. I think the shot may be, you know, again, I want to make it feel like it's hot in the desert, so I'll increase the exposure by 0.4. Uh, change the saturation, so you can increase the saturation, decrease it, pretty basic stuff. Uh, and then you can change the skin tone. It will just affect the, the, the colors that it recognizes as the skin tone, so I can make him look like he's really sick right now, uh, or kind of greenish, maybe he's from Mars. Uh, so again, I won't do it right now for this shot. Uh, you can add this thing called, if it's vintage and modern. So if you go to the right, it will apply sort of a modern look, left to vintage, and here you can just kind of look for yourself. If you add the modern look, it just kind of adds more contrast. It's, it's as if the shot was just kind of, you know, it was the film stack was newer, uh, uh, you know, if it was in good condition versus uh, if you know anything about shooting in film, if you take your film negatives especially and you don't store them properly over a long time, they start fading and start introducing other colors. And that's kind of what vintage will do. So if I drag it now to the left side, you'll see it kind of makes the shot look kind of faded, adds this kind of a reddish kind of cast over the shot and just makes it look kind of like a shot was, like I said, your negative was kind of mishandled or, or just, you know, it wasn't well taken care of o o over the, uh, the period of time. Um, so yeah, those, th that's the kind of thing that you can do here. So maybe I'll add a little bit of this vintage kind of look, or actually, you know, no, let's go to modern. And then grain, you can add that, uh, increase or decrease the, the grain stack. Uh, but here, let me just zoom in here to 100%. So you can see up here, uh, zoomed in, and here if I change the grain, 
if I increase it, as you can see, I started introducing more of this very organic looking film stock kind of grain. Uh, so I think, and you know, definitely I don't want my shadow to look like it's so grainy. So I'll put it back to 50. And then uh, another thing that you have uh, is the vignette, which is something very, um, you know, that used to appear in a lot of old films, uh, especially when they're using those vintage lenses. So as you can see, it adds a very organic, you know, vignette to, to here's the corners. And here we'll just put it to zero. And then uh, the last thing is just the strength, so the overall strength of the effect. So like, if we put it to zero, it's as if you're not applying the uh, this plugin at all. And then 100 or somewhere in between can kind of mix and match the look. So here again, I'll show you guys what we started with. This is the original shot. And this is how the final uh, shot looks. So pretty cool. And as you can see, very easily with just Magic Bill Bullet Film, you can, you can really make a shot look very organic and, and very film-like. And uh, now I'm going to quickly show you Mojo. So that's another plugin from the Magic Bullet Suite 12. Um, Mojo basically simulates a kind of a blackbuster Hollywood look with, again, very little effort on your part. You don't have to actually know much about colors. You can kind of easily uh, kind of dial in the look. So as you can you'll notice, when I apply Mojo, it already applies a cool look to our shot. It's kind of a coolish kind of, uh, 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 kind of tin look. And now I can increase the strength of Mojo here. So you notice if I just pull the slider, it kind of makes it very, it makes the shot very pop, kind of very, very contrasty, uh, and the colors very, very much stronger. And this is zero; it basically has no effect at all. So I'll put it around 36 for now. I think it looks good. Tint, you can change the tint of the shot, so you can kind of go more towards greenish kind of cyan uh, uh, colors. So you can see you can give a very kind of cool stylized look like this one, uh, kind of what you would see in a music video. Uh, balance, it will kind of change the balance of the shot, so if, uh, d depending on basically which area it's going to tint it, you know, one color and the other, and, and which area the other color. So that's kind of what Mojo does, it kind of gives you a two color kind of look, two, two process color look. So by moving this, as you can see, I'm kind of now telling it, uh, telling the Mojo to treat everything and apply the kind of blue look to the whole shot. If I move it to the left all the way, it, it's going to apply that kind of warm look to the, to the whole shot. Uh, so somewhere in the middle there, and you know, for this shot, I don't have to really adjust it because you, you'll notice uh, here, let, left left side of the of the face here, it kind of applies a bit of that kind of tin blue look, whereas whereas the right side of the face it uh, applies this kind of warmer look. So it works well with with uh, with this shot, but if, again, depending different different shots that you guys might be applying this to, you might have to sometimes play around with it. But most cases, if your shots are well exposed, like again, you just apply Mojo and pretty much your you have your your hollow Hollywood film look. Uh, another thing you might want to change is to warm it. So again, this is straightforward. You can warm the shot, so kind of adding a warming filter overall, but it doesn't take away completely the the, the cold or kind of bluish uh, tones in your shot. Uh, so you can see it makes it a lot warmer. Here it makes it a lot cooler. Um, and then you have punch it, which is kind of almost adds kind of contrast to your shot. As you can see, if I increase it, it really makes it very punchy. And the same thing if I put it in reverse, it makes it kind of less contrasty. It makes it look almost kind of washed out. And then bleach is sort of what you know you would have seen in like Saving Private Ryan or some of those like war movies, or some like really kind of out there music videos. It kind of uh, applies a, a kind of a bleaching process like they used to do back in the day on film stocks. And uh, it's it's a way of in a way it's a way of desaturating the shot, but kind of in a, in a very selective channel. So. You can see I can kind of bleach the shot here. I can punch it, and as you can see, uh, maybe uh, adjust the mojo the, the effect, and very easily I can really change the look of the shot. For uh, example, here I'll make it kind of a little bit warmer, um, and uh, and again the skin to the skin is the same kind of uh, effect that you had with the with Magic Bullet film. You can affect just the skin colors. So again, as you can see, you can very easily create this kind of a look. I can reset it here just to show you how it looks with the original Magic uh, Mojo settings. Here, maybe I'll increase them a little bit. And yeah, pretty cool way, like I said, to uh, to just take your shot and, uh, you know, if you're, you just run out of ideas, you're not really sure what kind of a look you want to your shot, but you definitely don't want it to look like it did before, very kind of flat video look. Uh, then with Mojo, you can kind of really easily transform the shot and, and, and give it that kind of a Hollywood blockbuster look. Uh, I'll show you also last the the thing uh, which comes also with them um, with this whole suite which is the uh, Cosmo I'm not gonna get into denoiser or lat body I'll leave that for another time but Cosmo is basically it's it's a way of 
you could say f uh, fixing a bad makeup job or let's say if your talent has some blemishes or things like that so in this shot I don't know if you can see it it's maybe not the best example but uh, the actor maybe you could say he was I don't know if he was sweating or whatever or uh, you could see the harsh sun kind of reflecting and he has a little bit of you know it's not bad but you could say maybe let's say let's say your client gets back to you and says oh I want want you to fix the, the way that the skin looks so Cosmo is great for that because without again doing any special effects you can easily just you know kind of soften and fix the skin so here I'm gonna apply Cosmo here um, and as you can see right away just by applying Cosmo it kind of softens the the the, the, the skin tones in the shot so it does not make the whole look, shot look like it's out of focus or, or like it's uh, soft just in the skin tones and here you have uh, you can just you know basic uh, uh, controls are for example for the skin color so you can grab it and you can basically change the color of the skin so you can make him look like a red uh, like alien or something or f maybe from Mars greenish looking uh, and that would be basically if let's say you didn't get your skin tones you know properly lit uh, in your shot and you really want to dial in a different look then that that's where this would come in great uh, and then you have these other kind of uh, uh, you know settings like the squeen, uh, squeeze and then soften is basically just increases the the softening effect so if you see if I overdo it really starts making it look like like it's kind of a cartoon kind of look almost so definitely you don't want to go to a hundred but I think somewhere maybe between maybe like 15 20 that kind of adds a very subtle look where like I said it it will soften the, the skin and hide some of the blemishes or imperfections and if you also want to just see w uh, which areas of your shot Cosmo is affecting you can click the skin overlay here you can just click it and as you can see this gr these grid lines show you that basically it's recognizing that this is the skin here the skin and then since the the desert here behind him has faintly a little bit of the you know that same kind of look uh, or that same kind of color tone as the skin it's showing you that it's going to affect that too so in some shots you might want to be careful with Cosmo because like I said you might uh, be applying the softening effect to parts of the image where you don't want to be applying it to but if, you, if that's the case then you can go into skin softening and fine-tuning and you can sort of uh, adjust which areas are actually being affected so uh, anyway so that's a quick look at Cosmo and let me maybe show you with for example with one of our looks applied so this is with uh, the first look I did the colorista this is uh, you can see you know this is how it looks with Cosmo and this is without Cosmos. As you can see, it's more noticeable now because this look is very contrasty. So again, without Cosmo, you can definitely see more of those little imperfections. And then with Cosmo applied, it just kind of adds a, a very, very subtle but nice way, sort of a touch to the, the, the skin. Uh, anyways, that's that's it for this tutorial. Hope you guys enjoy it. Again, if you guys, uh, you know, if, uh, want to get, uh, you know, some of these tools that I'm using, make sure you guys go to redgiant.com. Uh, they offer the Magic Bullet, you know, the Mojo, the Cosmo, they also the Denoiser, LAD Party, uh, along with Bullet Film, Colorista, and Magic Bullet Looks. All comes together bundled with, with an, an Magic Bullet Suite, and right now retails for $7.99. Uh, if you buy it, uh, you're saving yourself uh, almost $300 if you were to buy them all separately. But if you want to, if you just, for example, know you're going to use just one of these, uh, again, you can buy them separately too if, if you want. Again, just go to redgiant.com. Uh, and as always, if you guys want to see more uh, filmmaking tutorials or some of the other color grading tutorials that I've done, uh, make sure you check out my website. That's at tomantosfilms.com. Thank you guys, and I'll see you next time.